Hey, what's going on, everybody? It is episode number 188 of the Audible Farm podcast, and this episode is brought to you by Couchtown Coffee. I drink Couchtown pretty much every morning. I think today was one of the first days I didn't drink it because I ran out. You'd think I'd learn by now to order before I run out. That's that's not the case. <laughs> so order some couch down coffee. And if you're running low, make an order so you don't run out like me and have to drink something else. Couch down coffee is roasted right here in Iowa. It's my favorite coffee. You can find it at couchtowncoffee.com. All I have to go is do is go to couchtowncoffee.com. Find a coffee you like. Let them know how you want it roasted. Make your order. And what else is cool? If you tell them Audible Farm sent you, they'll give you 10% off. Why? Because Couchtown Coffee is that awesome. Thanks, Couchtown. This week, I'm sitting down with the incomparable Mike Schulte. Mike Schulte is the drummer for the Pork Tornadoes, which is one of Iowa's largest cover bands. And by largest, I mean popularity-wise. It's not like they have 500 members or something. (laughs) And Mike Schulte is also one of the voices that you can hear on the Confused Breakfast podcast, which we discuss both of those in this episode, uh, Mike wants to talk about how this is going to be one of the biggest summers for live music, maybe ever. And I tend to agree. We discuss that in this upcoming episode. We discuss his podcast that he's got going on. We discuss different things that uh, he's done in the music scene over the years. We, d- we discuss the importance of having a community around you of people that you enjoy being around and and keeping everyone in the community, kind of helping each other and raising each other up. Uh, you know, he, he talks about all sorts of things that are very, very important for bands. Uh, if you wanted to go from wh- whatever level you would consider yourself at to the next level, because, well, he's he's seen and done a lot, you know, it's, it just comes down to that. That's just the way it is. You know, and I, I like having him on here because he seems to have the perspective that I have on music amplified quite a bit because I, he's played in original bands. I've played in original bands. He's played in a cover band. I've played in cover bands. So we, we kind of have a little bit of similarities, but he's had uh, much more exposure and more success doing both than I have. So it's fun to get his take on some of these things. Some things reinforce my opinions. Others make me rethink my own opinions. And that's one reason I like having him on here because he'll be honest, uh, but he'll also he'll also goof around and have a great time with us, too. And you'll find that out in this episode. I hope you guys enjoy this one. It is one of my favorite guests that I have on. I seem to have him on about once a year. It's Mike Schulte from the Pork Tornadoes and the Confused Breakfast Podcast. It's the Audible Farm Podcast. With your host, Peter Stockdale. All right, I'm sitting down today with Mike Schulte, the one and only drummer for the Pork Tornadoes. You guys are pretty much, if I had to say, I'd say you guys are pretty much one of the top tier cover bands in Iowa, hands down, bar none. I dare someone to to try to challenge it. Well, I think you're I think you're wrong. I think you're wrong. I think uh, it's the world and not just Iowa. I think it's the world, <laughs> top tier of the world. So uh, all of your listeners immediately were like, "I knew I hated that guy." Click, and they turned this off. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Those guys God. are such cocky, cocky jerks. I'm turning this off. Well, it should... I'm joking for anyone that doesn't know me. I love to be sarcastic. Oh, Sorry about man. that. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I've. I've been lucky enough to to talk to you a few times over the years and meet you in person. And uh, yes, very, very uh, fun loving guy, as well as everyone in the Pork Tornadoes. You guys are all you just having a blast every day out there. When, whenever you guys are playing, it just seems like you guys are having the time of your lives. Well, when it comes back down to it, like, you know, being in a band is a very hard thing to do. And, you know, nobody understands the amount of work that goes into whether you are forming your first band and just rehearsing or you are the number one band in the world. Like there's so much work that goes into it. And so why not enjoy yourself when you finally get into the moment of being on stage? And I I've had trouble with that all my life. I've always been so caught up in like, Oh, I hope it sounds good. And what's the next song coming up? Even though I'm in the, in the middle of a song, I'm thinking about the next song. And then all of a sudden the show's over and you go, I think that was fun, but I've been trying really, especially since COVID and our entire year of 2020 was such a mess that I've been like 2021, 2022, I'm going to spend time 
thinking about being in the moment and just enjoying it. Cause you know, this stuff doesn't last forever. I mean, we'd like to think it does, but you never know. Could, could be your last gig at some point. So you, you, got, you just got to go for it. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's very true. Uh, me being like a quote unquote hired gun for people, I kind of just play lead guitar with whoever invites me along. And, uh, same deal there, man. You never know when it's going to be over. So you might as well just enjoy it. Cause you might not get hired tomorrow. You know, you never, you never know, you know, so it is just, oh, yeah. Never know, man. Yeah, gosh. And that's that's another thing, though, too. You were joking about, like, the best band in the world or whatever. But, like, you, uh, as, a, as a person, are also a podcaster that has a podcast that has reached some, some fame. Best podcast in the world, yeah. yeah yes. In the world, yep. Number one in the world, man. Uh, what is your actual statistic for uh, your category for your podcast? For those that don't, don't know, it's The Confused Breakfast. It is absolutely hilarious. I've listened to a few episodes. I'm not a movie guy, but the ones that I know well, I'm like, I'm definitely watching this one. So uh, you guys <laughs> no, are a mo- dude. movie podcast. It's funny. It's serious. You point out things most people don't know, and you've gotten some recognition over the years. Over the year, I should it's, say. It's been crazy. I, oh, yeah. I, I started this thing. I, I'm sure – the funny thing is I'm sure a lot of your listeners on this are similar to me and you where the reason they're listening to this is because they're, they're interested in like do in like being better and they want to know stuff and they want to improve on the, on the music world. And so I'm also guessing that they are the ones in their bands who like really run stuff and like have to be creative and like to run the social medias and stuff. And that's me definitely in, in the pork tornadoes. But when that all went away in 2020, man, I was like, I was struggling with it. You know, I I live my life kind of like you, apparently, like we were talking off air. You know, I just say yes to everything. And I love being busy. I love when people are like, how how do you do all these things? I just do it. I'm super awesome, you know. (laughs) But uh, but they when 2020 happened, man, I I needed something creative very badly. And I think how we technically met was – you know, I had already had some pod- podcasting's always been a fun thing for me. The Pork Tornadoes have a podcast called Pretty Cool. We do that from time to time during shows. Uh, and then I did the Iowa Music podcast for I don't know. There's probably like 50, 60 episodes of that. Mm-hmm. But like, I don't know. I was looking for something bigger, right? I was looking for like a everything I'd ever done podcast wise was isolated to a small group of people, you know, where it's like you, you have to know the pork tornadoes to listen to our podcast, or you have to be a musician from Iowa who doesn't hate my guts to listen to the Iowa music (laughs) podcast. So, so like I just, you know, I'm, I'm sitting here going, well, what's something that I'm very passionate about. That's not like music related. And, and for me, it's like classic movies, eighties, nineties, your, your favorite movies from those decades, the nostalgia, nostalgia is such a huge thing nowadays that we all yearn for. And talking about old movies really like revs that nostalgia engine. So I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to start this podcast just to be creative. Who knows if people listen to it. And, and of course you start off and like, even your friends won't even listen to it and you're getting five downloads an episode. And people think podcasting is like this glorious thing where you just, you put it out there and millions of people hear it. It's like, nah, that doesn't happen. But you know, we, we made sure that our product was good and we were having fun. And, and the more people that listened, they, the more they told their friends. And then one day, uh, I started a TikTok. I think we, I think we've had conversations about that before where like it's the new cool thing and I, and I hated it, but I was like, all right, let's see what happens here. And and the crazy thing about TikTok we can talk about later is there, that's the smartest algorithm in the history of, of any social media engine in the world. And it, it did its job. We put out some cool content on there and it just went, you know, we've had, I think we've had 61 million views on our Confused Breakfast platform Holy of TikTok videos. Crap. <laughs> yeah, right. It's insanity, right? Multiple, multiple million view videos. And a, a fellow by the name of Bert Kreischer, if you've ever heard of him, he's, <laughs> Brent, a, Brent he's Crystals. a very famous. Brent <laughs> Crystal. He's a very famous comedian. And he uh, has a podcast called – well, he's got many. But the main one was uh, Two Bears, One Cave. He somehow – found us on TikTok through the algorithms and he liked, he started liking our videos and following us. And then he mentioned us on his podcast, two bears, one cave. He like by name mentioned the confused breakfast podcast, then pulled up his phone and like played a video over his phone in the microphone, which was my voice, which is like mind blowing. Right. 
I, I didn't listen to that episode. And I, I remember that day, all of a sudden, all these messages are coming in and our social media is blowing up. And all of a sudden it's like, I heard, heard you on two bears, one cave, heard you on two bears, heard you on Burke Kreischer. Wait, what did, did he mention <laughs> us on his podcast? So, so of course I, I immediately listen to the episode and I find it, my mind's blown. And that was a, that was a big catalyst. I mean, that's a, that's a lesson in anything in bands, in podcasts is like, have good content, be good at it, and then cross your fingers and hope you get lucky. Cause I mean, that's really, if he had, I've said this before, if our content had been bad or our podcast had been bad, he would have mentioned us, people would have checked it out and then, and then never came back, you know? So like there, that's it. That's an, in a way to think like, if you're out there creating music or you, you're doing a podcast, like make sure it's good and just keep doing it. <laughs> and hopefully somebody will find your hustle and they will love it. And so you were asking about stats. That's a roundabout way to get there. But we, we hit after he mentioned that we were number one in the U S Canada and Australia in like the months of October, November last year, Whoa. um, for TV review, TV movie related podcasts in, in all three of those countries. It was like for about a month or two, we were number one, which was like, what? Wow. <laughs> How does that happen? <laughs> and you know, of course, some of that, some of that drops off. You don't, you don't retain everybody that listens to you from something like that, but we're, we're consistently in like the top, um, we'll get up to about five and we'll go down to about 25 in, in those, in those countries right now. And so it's been fun, man. I, I figured by now I would have quit. And now that life's back to normal and music's back to normal, but I can't stop at this point. Like people, people will riot if I stop, <laughs> if I stop making this podcast, you know? Yeah. I mean, that's, that's another wild thing to think of. I mean, I have a, uh, I would say a modest listener base here just based on the niche market that I'm going for. But at the same time, like, if I don't put out an episode, which I didn't a couple weeks ago, people will message you I know and, they'll, this. and they'll be like, are you OK? And it's like, yeah, I'm fine. I was just just busy. It's, <laughs> it's cool. It's cool. Like, I'm just busy, man. Oh, yeah. So it's crazy. The, the other end of that is well, like, let's say you had a bunch of content and it wasn't good. Who's to say that, you know, Bert might have seen it and never mentioned it in the first place even? That's very true, man. That That's how that's how the pork tornadoes. I mean, we've always we've we've been doing this for 15 years uh, as a band we've been playing music and you know we just a lot of that was luck of of making sure we were making sure we had good content and and then just making sure it's out in the world and it's ready to be found and that our fans love it and then same thing kind of happened that was the Tennessee whiskey video that that somehow just caught the algorithm wave of YouTube and went nuts and and again, like, to your point, yeah, like it's because that video was was really good and that song sounds really good, isn't it? That's why people liked it. And then when they sent it to a friend, the friend liked it, and then they sent it to a friend. So yeah, you're right. But Bert Kreischer may have have seen another podcast similar to ours that wasn't good and just didn't say anything about it. You know, yeah. <laughs> you never know who's seeing or hearing your stuff. That's the crazy part. Yeah, I mean, and I've been kind of like feeling that a little bit as as far as like putting out good content, like. Uh, one of the arguments I've kind of been making, like when I first talked to you, I kind of went through and I want to say like cleaned up the the YouTube page of the band that I'm in, Three Finger Betty. But I, I took a lot of like the, you know, I would say like non-professional videos on there, the ones that were look like they were taken with like an iPhone 3 or something, you know, and the audio is OK, but it's not great. And it's like, I don't want someone to find this and have this be their first and only impression of us. So I, I left, all this, left all the studio stuff on there and I've kind of tried to like if we go live and stuff like that, it's like they're available, but those videos are kind of hidden away somewhere or whatever. And, you know, I mean, you know that our Facebook got taken away or whatever last yeah. year. So and like your we, Instagram now too, Instagram maybe or now what? Too. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Damn. Yeah. So I think the whole gist with the Instagram and I'll let it out here. Cause, um, I do have the emails and stuff and I've kind of danced around it, but I, I believe someone reported us as being a minor on Instagram and we didn't have any way to prove, we didn't have any way to prove that we weren't a minor because we're not that's so stupid yeah we, we're not an llc and we don't have like any of those paperwork or anything to prove that we're a business so we had to like try to argue like yeah we're we're people and we're in the band and stuff and here's all of our identification and stuff and they're like you don't have any other documentation sorry um that's terrifying as the man who runs all of our social media like that's the i i can't imagine 
how with how important that stuff is now because social media is is a website it's your it's your identity online it's it's your bands every it's where people go people don't even type in websites anymore like if you're going hey uh, bill's restaurant you want to go there tonight i wonder if they're open you don't go to their website you don't call them you go to their facebook page yep. and you go are they open tonight and so the thought of losing that just is like oh it gives me a Ugh, I don't like it, man. Yeah, and I almost feel bad. I almost like I may end up editing out the reason why it got reported because I don't. I don't want people to like go about and just like start trashing other people and be like minor, 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 and then just start like eliminating all the Instagrams across the world, you know? Because I don't know. So I'm I may end up like editing that part out. But yeah, it was a horrible, horrible I deal. <laughs> I don't know if you. I don't know if you really have to. I just wonder if if because see these like these out these companies they don't Facebook. Instagram, they don't have like people that are that work for them. You know, they don't have like someone that you can call and talk to. So they're they're literally just people that that just get some perks for just kind of being online and rolling through some stuff. So I I don't think it's like I don't think you could go do that to anyone else. I just think it's the matter, the easy matter of the name Betty in it. And and because like it's a woman's name in your name and and the the bot just kind of went oh yep yeah, that that checks out okay cool yeah you're you're done and then that's the sad part is you can't you can't do anything about it no I mean the worst part was it was like all connected we have like the Instagram and the Facebook and everything connected and stuff so it's all connected to all these other accounts especially like the Facebook to Instagram they're all owned by Meta or whatever the heck he wants to call it now. You know, so it's like, how can you see that we have one here and one here and they're connected, but like this one has to go for some reason? Like I, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. So that was, that was a horrible, horrible ordeal. And, uh, I think you've talked about it though, too, man. I think you've said how, you know, like you, I think there was a full episode about don't let this happen to you. And there are, let's just reiterate that. I mean, like if don't let one person have control of your social media, like I, I will go on record and say one person should be the one posting things. It shouldn't be everybody making posts. But if you go into your Facebook, you can add people as admins. You can add the other band members as as controlling admins and do that. Because if one person like gets hacked or something, at least there's another person involved that still has control over that page. And, and all these social medias are doing like two factor authorizations. Now do it. That's not a scam. Fill it out. Absolutely. Make sure there are multiple way. I know it might take you longer to sign in sometimes who cares. It's better than the alternative. Yeah. Cause I mean, even if you have two people on the account, which is what we had on the Facebook account that went away, somebody hacked one of the administrators and then he just took everyone off the page and you know, oh geez the page just nobody could control it anymore you know and the other end of that is you don't want to accidentally take yourself off as the administrator because then you have a facebook page that's dead with no administrators which i know for a fact <laughs> happened like to somebody that was a guest like two or three guests ago so oh my god uh, yeah they got rid of their facebook account and when they came back and reactivated it it pulled them off the page that they were managing for their own business which is an actual business and they couldn't go get it back and they tried for years and eventually just they just started a new one so yeah social Man. media it's necessary evil for sure it's it's the worst and I, I actually funny enough i went back and it's been so long since i did that iowa music podcast where you know like we were for a while there we were dropping some pretty cool there was it was very there was two ways it was like it started off similar to what you do where it's like hey meet some really cool musicians let's see what they have to say uh, but then it turned more into like advice, you know, like, Hey, here's what you need to be doing on Instagram. But it's funny. I went back and listened to an episode and there was one particularly about Facebook where all, everything I said was like this deep, dark knowledge secrets of like, this is how you succeed at Facebook. And all that's obsolete now. It's like, it's a year later and now don't do those things. Don't do those things. Cause something has changed and they don't want you to do those things. So it's like, it's messed up, man. It's, it's a necessary evil that just, ugh pisses yeah. me off yeah and it sucks too because like i was talking recently on a podcast about that with a, a guy that you know he he was on almost a year earlier and he said yeah the algorithms change where you used to want to make stories and make posts just about every single day and you want to post a couple days out on things so you can kind of draw you know a little bit of attention to it but now it's like reels which is literally just facebook's tiktok rip off TikTok. <laughs> yeah so <laughs> yeah and you'll see that most of the reels are literally just saved tiktoks that people just repost on the reel yeah <laughs> so I wonder how that even works. Like, how do how can TikTok come up with this platform, but then Instagram's like, yeah, we do the same thing. 
We yeah. just call it a different name. Like I, there seems to be no copyright involved in any of this stuff. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know. Maybe it's like the general idea can't be copyrighted, but like the algorithm that they've written, you know, can't. Or there's probably some goofy tech thing out there or whatever. But holy moly, yeah. I. Do you, what's that? Oh, do you do you have a TikTok? Uh, I don't yet. It's it is very. It's, nef- I'm, I'm it, not saying you have to. <laughs> I'm not saying you have to because like it's a. I have one. I have one for the band and for the podcast, and I don't scroll. I don't watch the videos because it's a black hole. It's it's amazing and unbelievable how good the algorithm is at knowing what you like. And if you take if you're scrolling through videos and you take a one millisecond longer before you scroll to the next one, they're like, got him. That's exactly what will catch his eye, and we're gonna put more of that in there. But I'll tell you what, man, I'm convinced. And it's going to get less and less moving forward as as that platform has become so much more popular that everyone that has a TikTok that actually posts videos, you're going to get one chance where like something you post is going to get plugged into the algorithm and it's going to go nuts and you're going to get 10,000, 100,000, million views. I, I'm convinced that everyone will get a shot because the algorithm wants you to get a taste of like the cool – like endorphins of like, oh, my Go, shit's going viral, going viral is, man. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And and it, and you're going to get that taste. So like if you're a band or a podcast or a person who makes good content, like go for it and just keep putting some good stuff out and just wait. One of them will go nuts. And again, if your stuff's good, then people will latch on to it. But I'm, I, I mean, I, I feel like it's starting to dwindle because even our our videos are not – we have 270,000 followers and you'll you'll post one where a thousand it gets a thousand views you're like that makes no sense that it only has a thousand views from 270,000 but who knows man Th- there'll be something else will come around in the next year that'll be even better than that i guess yeah it's true that's very true yeah it's it's cool that like tiktok has proven you know to be that successful for you but it also comes down to the fact that you've got to put the work in you got to prepare like if you didn't make these videos there there wouldn't be anything to post on tiktok you know, and it, it just comes down to like, you have to first create the content in the first place, even, you know, to, to even get the videos, to get them out there, you know? So, and I know for a fact, like you said, uh, I know people that also have podcasts and bands and things like that with, with what, you know, a modest following, uh, I'll just say it that way to be like as nice as possible about it, but they're pulling in, you know, 10, 20, 30,000 views on some of their TikToks. And it's like, holy moly. Yeah. So you're exactly right. They're, they're plugging some of this stuff into the algorithm that may or may not fit it may, might not seem like it's that popular, but all of a sudden it's just like, boom, you got, you know, thousands and thousands of views just coming out of nowhere. Yeah, <sighs> it's it's nuts. And I, I think uh, I think there's probably more podcasts in the world than there are bands at this point, because I think that's <laughs> the most popular medium right now. And so, like you think, just like music, just like anything, how do you get recognized? There, there's so much static out there. How do you stand out? It's I, I don't even I still don't know the answer to that. I think it's just hustling and having content and making it as good as possible and just going please 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 somebody somehow see this so <laughs> yeah no kidding yeah i mean like you said too this isn't your first f- foray into the podcast realm and we touched on it a little bit i think in the last podcast but you had the iowa music podcast i, I found myself falling in love with that one because not only like you said would you kind of bring people on to meet them and kind of talk about little advice here. But you also use that as an avenue to discuss hot button issues, which is something that I think is one of my favorite things about you is that you will not shy away from that stuff. I mean, I try to be politically, you know, uh, I'm, you know, neutral to everything. You know, I try to act like that, even though I have opinions just like everyone else. But, but you'd bring in um, one of the ones I do recall listening to that really kind of made me rethink everything was you brought in somebody and you were talking about uh the differences in the races in the music scene in a small music scene and that was Mm. something that uh i was like holy cow this is just some guy from iowa talking about this and this is serious business and that was that was one of my favorite like eye-opening episodes as far as like this guy's got his fingers on the pulse you know and uh (laughs) well yeah man i i just a little background on i on people that don't know me you know i'm i'm I've been playing music for uh, my first band was when I was 14. I'm, I'm almost 40 right now. And I've been in so many bands and I've played so many shows. I've probably played a thousand show plus shows in my life. You know, I've I've recorded, I've toured and like I, I genuinely feel like I do know things like I, I don't know it all. I don't have all the answers, but 
I think back to when I was coming up or when I was starting a band and I was always like, man, if, if somebody would have just, would have, would just come around and just be like, hi, I'm at this level that you want to go to ask me questions. Let, let's talk about it. I want to give you advice. I, I would have just been all over that. And so like I just started that podcast going, this will be cool. Like this is a great way to just to just drop some knowledge on on uh, people and have some cool conversations. And it it was weird. There, there was a, a large amount of people that were like, this is great. This is awesome. But then there was this whole other part of the population that was like, well, what's in it for you? Like who makes you the guy that knows everything? I uh, it was it was so deflating. I'm sure you get that all the time of just like I'm literally I'm there's nothing I'm not making money off of this. I'm spending so much time just just to make the music scene better and to just try to like give people a little boost and make make Iowa this place that everybody's the best at. And and you know what like it just so that's when I started really just pushing boundaries. I was like, you know what? If you hate me, then then let's make you hate me more. And so yeah, we. I didn't shy away from a lot of stuff like like when COVID first started, we had some crazy conversations. And then when it was like, do we get back at it? And then, yeah, like that episode with NASA where we talked like racism in 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 music and just in just in general in life. I'm mean, like, why not? Let's just that's what these things are for is just just talk about stuff and see what happens, you know? Yeah, I, re- I definitely recall about the time that you quit doing the podcast. Yeah. Uh, y- I've seen you online. You and I are Facebook friends. We're in some of the same groups together, but I recall seeing you in one particular group, and I'm not going to call it out because it uh, you and I know what it is, and everyone else will know what it is. There's one particular group online where people would ask for advice or uh, what's your opinion on this or like, my band's going to do this. What do you think? And every now and then you'd come in with a comment and be like, I think this might be the best way to go about that. Or maybe look at going down this avenue instead. And like you said, there were people that would comment back and just be like, you know, this, this guy's trash. Don't talk to him. He doesn't know what he's talking about. He's not smart and stuff. And it's like, he's got like million, million plus view videos in one of his bands, you know? And like, I was just like, whatever. I, I just ignored the whole thing. The funniest part about that Facebook group was I got booted because it's like regional. And so I'd like sneak in every now and then to kind of like read what was going on. And then eventually somebody would be like, this guy's not from the area and boot me back out. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, so I, I got to see a tiny bit of like some of the stuff that went down in that group because it exploded for a short period of time. There were a lot of people in the music scene that were hopping into that group to see what the commotion was all about, you know, and I th- I thought that was one of the saddest things. A lot things. of that was. Yeah, no, I, I agree, man. I the, the thing that always comes up the most in our I feel like in Iowa, in our community in Cedar Rapids area is this cover band versus original thing. Right. That's like seems to be the biggest tension in the world Uh, like but it's just in our little area i've talked to people in other places and i've talked to people in other countries and they're like no like original artists do what they want cover artists do what they want and and nobody cares but for some reason there's like this big deal especially in like the cedar rapids area And, and so we tackled that quite a bit and that was I think that's where a lot of the hatred came for me is that, oh, he's in a cover band. Why did they get to play that show and we don't? And and I don't know. Somehow I just became the scapegoat of it. And I don't care because you know what the cool thing about that group, that Facebook page was is that it got me in touch with some really cool people like you and other people in the scene that I know that I can talk to them anytime and they know that they can reach out to me at any point and say, I've got a question. And so that, that's more what it's, I I don't need, we don't need a a Facebook page to do this. Just call me (laughs) or message me if you want to throw, I had a, there's a really great band. Um, there's so many great bands around right now, by the way, we can talk about that, but they're, they're called the Schmidt brothers. They're from, uh, the like Vinton Cedar Rapids area. They do, they do covers. They're three brothers and they all sing and they all like, it's just, they're, they're very talented and they, they're great dudes. They're like willing to, they want to learn. They want to keep progressing. And so the guy, uh, uh, I think it was Sam called me a couple weeks ago and they were going to put on their own show. It's like, how do we get sponsorships and how do we, how do I go about talking to someone and seeing if they'll sponsor this event we're putting on? And so we had like a 30 minute conversation that he was, I was happy to provide the information and he was like very thankful. And, and so he, like that, that's what, that's what a community is, right? It's, you're really good at this. I'm really good at this. He's really good at that. Let's all get together and like help each other out. You know, that's, that was the whole point. So I don't even care anymore. Like I don't even, I haven't scrolled Facebook in like two months. I still have all my, I haven't sat there and scrolled a newsfeed. It's like, I feel 
I feel lighter. I feel just like life is good that I'm not reading stupid crap on Facebook, you know? Yeah. yeah. Oh, my kid ate a cheeseburger at the park the other day and the pickles blew off in the wind. And it's like, oh, thank God I wasted my time reading that. <laughs> Holy cow. Yeah, dude. Well, what can we what can we argue about today? I don't know. Let's find out. You know, it is a funny thing though, too, cuz you were talking uh Cedar Rapids music scene, which I think might secretly be the best music scene in Iowa as far as like amount of bands, talent level, places to play, etc. And I'm very very partial to my North Central Iowa area. I mean, very partial to it. But I still think that you guys might have it, you know, etched out over there like Oh, it's weird that you guys don't get along as well as you know some of the other areas, but those those butting of heads that happens in, I mean it, it happens in the Des Moines area from what I've seen down there, and I mean like it's weird because like different genres of original bands will argue with each other. I'm like, dude, you're on the same team. Like, what are you, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> so it's yeah, it, I I don't understand. Yeah, no, dude, I was in I was in an original band all my life up until like 2008. And I remember hating on cover bands and it's because there's this. So like I'm not telling you that that your hatred for cover bands is is dumb. It's like, no, I used to have that. But now that I've I've been on both sides, I've I know there are awesome things about both sides of it. And I'm not saying one's better. I've never have said one's better. I finally got to uh, get back into the original scene with Dope Walker Mm -hmm. a couple years ago where we went in the studio and we recorded. We like wrote original stuff from the ground up and it was amazing like that that is what original music is is the process of creation from nothing to completion at that that you can't expect to to be in an original band and play in front of 2000 people like it doesn't work that way you it's it's very hard to create something that moves people the way that famous artists do you know so like you can't go into it thinking, well, well, why can't they just put us? Why can't they just put us in front of the pork tornadoes crowd and just let us play instead, and then we'll do it? It's like it. That's not how it works. So you know, I, I get it, man. It, but I just don't understand why people don't just work together and 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 just like go, oh, okay, I can learn that from them, and they can learn that from me, and let's just like have a good time because that's what music is. Is awesome, you know? Yeah, yeah, I totally agree. I mean, it's kind of weird because it'd be like a painter telling a sculpture artist that their sculpture art is not art or something you know it's it's so it's so weird to think that (laughs) one one justifies being art more than the other and and to the point of you saying why can't my band get out there and just play in front of the book me instead of the pork tornadoes and put me in front of the pork tornadoes fans and then then i'll get all the bookings it's like you guys are actually doing that you're taking time out of bookings that you guys are making for festivals where you're the only band and you don't, you don't have to delete 30 minutes off the front end of your set if you don't want to, but you're doing it and giving other people an opportunity. I know that for a fact because I was one of them. I I got to play and open up with the pork tornadoes with Jesse Wilson last year. And it was an absolute blast. And I'll tell you what, uh, the re it's, it's not like we played in front of a thousand people in Eagle Grove opening up for the pork tornadoes. And now a thousand people come to every Jesse Wilson show. It, it didn't work like that, you know, and that's exactly what you're saying. Right. It's, it doesn't work like that. Unfortunately, it doesn't work like that, but, but the kudos is going to you guys for deciding to bring other people with you and open up. And that's been a, a big focal point of you guys last year. And this year, it seems like almost every single show you're booking, you're bringing somebody with you. Any, any chance we get, we want an opener. There's many reasons for that. Like one, it's hard to, it's hard to just start the show, (laughs) you know, like it's, it's nice when there's a buffer between, between us and when people arrive and you get a couple more drinks in you. So that's, that's a really great perk, but also it's like, why not, why not get somebody else out there? Why not have, give us a chance to see, cause we don't get to like watch many bands. So it, it gives us a chance to, to listen to bands. It gives us a chance to meet other bands and yeah, man, like, so if we, if we have the chance to, to pick someone, we usually do. And we try to find somebody local. Uh, otherwise we tell the festival, we're like, fine, get somebody, put a, put them on front. Let's, let's do this thing. I mean, it's like, it's like hairball, you know, hairball has probably never played a show that didn't have an opening act, at least that I know of. And they seem to always kind of like let the local community or promoter pick that band and just put them on stage with them. And it's, it's so cool that, why not? Like, I wish we would have had a chance to open up for some crazy band. Actually, shit, actually, we got to open up for Hairball, and it, it was like one of those things where we usually we're usually the headliner. And and actually, twice last year, we got to be the opening act for a bigger band, and it was like, oh, this is awesome. Like, I felt I felt that excitement of like, oh, this isn't our crowd, but we're gonna go out and we're gonna get them, you know. And that's 
I hope that that's what other openers for us feel the same way, you know? Oh, yeah. I, I can tell you hands down, like last year I was so excited for it. I was so happy to do it. You guys got booked again this year at the same venue we ended up playing with you at. Unfortunately, can't make it happen. But uh, you yeah, are. We tried to do it again, man. We tried. Yeah, man. And, and I mean, there's there's always another year, maybe. So we'll just. Uh, but like we said in the intro, there's not always another not always another year, not always another <laughs> nope. gig. So but yeah, I mean, that was kind of a bummer that we couldn't do it. But at the same time, it's it's nice to get offered. It's nice to 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 realize I'm in. You know, you you know me, and I'm from the area. When you come up here, you said, you know, name me f- five bands that might fit in front of us. So I I went out and found, you know, five people that were probably have the biggest draw to the area, and said, here's here they are, and this is what they play. And you picked you picked out the ones you wanted, and it all I mean it all worked out fine. I I can't wait for this year. I see you're going to play with some bands that I've always kind of wanted to see, but uh, haven't been able to see. So maybe uh, I'll have to make a venture to a Pork Tornado show, and I'll get to double down. I'll get to see the Pork Tees and another band that I haven't seen before. So that that should be pretty cool. Nope. We'll be in, yeah, man, we'll be in Eagle Grove again for Summerfest on June 18th. Uh, that's what, that's how we played together last year. This year it's uh, Scott Kirkhart. And I think, I honestly think he's on like two other shows that we're playing. I think we're playing with him like three times this summer, which is super cool because yep. I would have never had a chance to let alone see him. Uh, secondly, get to know him. But I mean, from listening to Audible Farm, it's like, okay, now I do know who this guy is and I know what he's all about. And this is going to be awesome. So it's going to be, I think we're, I'm, it's at least twice. I think it's maybe three times this summer that he's playing with us. Yeah, I, th- I think you've, I think that's right. I think you had him booked twice. And there's one of them's like in maybe Lakeview or something like that, which he Lakeview, also yep. he draws a lot of people over in that area too. So, you know, it's a, it's a good good person to bring out front, good person to draw with. Uh, you know, he's such a fun guy, just like just like all you guys. So it's it's going to be a heck of a show. And like I said, it, it literally doesn't matter what area of the state the Pork Tees are playing in this summer. Go watch them. Go enjoy a local opener. And if the opener's from, you know, you never know. They might be from two towns over, and you'll get to find some new favorite band that you didn't know you enjoyed opening up for the Pork Tees this summer. Dude, one, th- one thing that just came up from what you said, though, is that it's a lesson. It's a lesson in being a part, a good part of the music community. Is is I asked you, I said, hey, since you can't play, name some bands and some artists that that should should be able to open for us. And you know, you know, you know everybody. And you did not give me every band you know. You gave me like three or four that that you're like these are good people and and they are nice and you should pick them where if you're if you're a a trouble starter you're a troublemaker good luck good luck getting shows good luck being brought up in conversations of where people are at are talking and festivals we need it we need a good band and there's going to be somebody on that committee that's like "Uh uh-uh no those guys played at our bar last summer and they are trash humans and do not let them on this festival you know so like (laughs) you got you got don't burn bridges I, i swear Oh, it's, it's a, that's a tough one to learn. I spent, I mean, I know that for a fact that I spent, oh, let's say the first 20 ish years of my life burning bridges. That's like all I did. So I've been spending the last like 15 trying to build them all back up. But, but yeah. And I mean, like, that's another thing you could have asked me like, Hey, who should open up for the pork tees? I could have just been like three finger Betty, you know, but like, yeah. it's, is it going to be a great fit? <laughs> I don't know. So that's another thing is like you got to be a little bit tasteful with your selections and things like that. And I'm I'm happy to to throw around ideas for bands like oh I, I need somebody from your area that plays this kind of music. All right, I, I know three of them, you know. So I I know a lot of people that play a lot of different styles of music that would be more than willing to open yeah, up man. for shows. So where are you guys gonna be at yeah, it this happens summer? To be quite a bit. Where are you guys gonna end up playing? Oh, dude, we're we're all. Up- yeah, we are all over the place. This will be our this will be our busiest summer we've ever had. I mean, because you know everything in 2020 canceled and moved to 21, so then everything in 2021 moved to 2022, and now 2022 wants more music. I mean, we've been booked we've been booked solid every day, every open available date this summer for months, uh, and we're still getting four to five inquiries like a week of Hey, can you come play street dance? Can you come play this? It's like. No, <laughs> we can't. <laughs> but uh, I mean, dude, we're yeah, we it starts off. We're in Pella on Saturday, which I don't think this will. I don't know when this comes out what, tomorrow or something yep, like that. It'll be out tomorrow. Yep. Yeah, we're in Pella on Saturday, the 14th. Then we go over to Dubuque, uh, Clinton, Wild Rose. We're at Lakeview. We're in Adventureland for their summer series. We're playing this big ass uh, show in Vinton, Iowa on June 11th. Eagle Grove on the 18th. The huge festival in Cedar Falls on the 22nd, 
uh, we're in Breda, we're in Rhinebeck, we're at Ankeny Summerfest, Charles City, Emmitsburg, Ragbri, our big McGrath Amphitheater show in Cedar Rapids. I mean, it's we're going to we're going to I think we got three shows in Illinois as well. We're going to Princeton, Chicago, and Decatur, Illinois. So it's gonna be it's gonna be nuts, man. I'm just the only thing I'm crossing my fingers for is good weather because. Last summer we didn't get a drop of rain on us the entire summer, so I'm like, uh oh, <laughs> here comes here comes the rain every show, karma, you know. Yeah, and I I don't I don't want to you know jinx you, but you did have one show that was canceled this year already, didn't you? Due to weather. Um, no, I don't think we did. We had a um, we had New Year's Eve canceled. That was the last. That was the only show that I think's been canceled. All right. Right. Unless, unless I'm just totally forgetting something. Oh, well, I mean, I could be wrong too. It's it's tough for me to keep track of everybody's everything, you know. So, uh, right. but yeah, I mean, that's crazy. Like you said, 2020. I mean, you couldn't really play any shows, and then it was 2021. You know, there were a lot of people that wanted to play shows, and now we're in 2022, and I I, I almost don't see anybody arguing the COVID argument anymore. So that means every single band is going to be playing as much as they can pretty much every town that had a festival that couldn't do one for the last year last two years they want to have one this summer they're booking i mean every place is booking all the time uh i started that facebook group and i just started tossing events in there and it's like some days just in my region there's like oh there's 13 shows going on this weekend like in my area alone you know there's a lot of shows no i think i think this summer will be in the most live music ever in the history of the world. I, I just really, especially in our area in Iowa, I just think there's going to be music in every town, on every street corner, every Friday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, because people obviously they want that. We, that was one of the things we all missed back in the, the we, we took for granted. We took live music for granted. We're not going to do that again. We're, we're going to spend our town money and we're going to have big parties. And so I, I've got a theory that, I mean, not only is there going to be this much live music going on, but I think every band has the opportunity to jump up into the next tier, you know, so like some of these national bands aren't, aren't able to come around. So the, the big regional bands now take those giant leaps up into national touring arena levels. And then the, the lesser regional bands jump in up into where those guys were. And then the, the town band ready to break out jumps into being a regional band. And so I think if you, if you're a, especially a cover band out there and you've got your stuff together, you just watch out. Yeah. <laughs> this summer is going to – you're going to get all those last-minute bookings and they're going to be big stages and lots of people. And so if you're not prepped yet, like make sure your your, your press kit's looking good. Make sure you're pra- practiced and polished because I think, I think it's going to be a big summer for a lot of bands that are looking to take the next step. Oh, absolutely. I mean I can vouch for that just in the simple fact – not me personally – but I've had people on the podcast within the last like month or two that just, you know, like they have the cover band, they fired everything up. They're all, they're all practiced up and good to go. And once they got two or three bookings under their belt and played those live shows, everyone saw how good they were. And now, now they've got triple the bookings they had a month ago, not because of me, because they went out and played a couple shows and people saw how good it was. And they're like, Oh, we're booking you for this town. We're booking you for that town. You want to play on this trailer at this fair? I mean, they're booking them for everything. So you're 100 percent correct. If you gotta, you gotta come correct yep. though. You gotta come correct. Like I said, you can't just send them like an uh, an iPhone three video that somebody took six years ago and be like, "This is what we got." Like, how's it sound? You know, might not get the bookings. <laughs> no, no, you got to be ready. And in fact, it's probably too late. You probably needed to already do that work the last couple of months to get these big ones. But you know, I mean, there's still chance. There, there are. It, they're going down. It's like this town festival is going down the the phone chain list of going well hairballs booked well pork teas are booked and they just they're going to just keep going down until they find a band so you're because they're having this festival and it's going to happen and there's going to be a lot of people there so whoever we can find is going to play it and that's when you're that's when you're going to get your advantages mm-hmm. yeah 100 percent, 100 percent. you know and i it's i mean you and i were talking before the podcast i have been busier than I've ever been in my entire life now, like just trying to keep up with multiple bands, multiple practices, multiple shows a week, guitar lessons, podcasting, et cetera, blah, 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 blah. You know, so it's tough to find that time to practice, but it is kind of fun when you finally get it all nailed down and get a schedule. And it's like, we're all going to be here on this day and we're all going to get together and we're going to hammer this stuff out. We've got these three hot points. So at least if we go into the next show, these three parts of these songs will be 
spot on, you know, and you could always come back and tackle a new song the next practice or two or three more or whatever before you know it, your whole set's hammered down, you know. And let, let me ask you this. I mean, we've, ta- we've we talked ad nauseum about practicing and coming correct, and it's been a while, I feel like, since we've talked about outsourcing um, some help from other people. You guys are also very good at that. You You bring people with that sell your merch for you so you don't have to – go in between sets and stand there all sweaty at a table and take $10 from people, you know, and make change. And, you know, so it's, it's really cool. I thought that was one of the coolest things ever. It's like, yeah, you're only, I mean, you're paying this person to be there. So they're working and they have a job to do, but still it's like, you're pretty much invited somebody with They're They're selling your shirts. It's something you don't have to worry about anymore. And as long as you can trust the person to be honest with the purse strings, it just takes all this stress off of the show. I know you guys have also done that with photographers, with videographers, with people that do lights, people that do sound. I mean, you guys have pretty much taken every aspect you could take out of what would be a professional band and said, I got somebody for that. I've got somebody for that. I've got somebody for that. I got, you had roadies the last time I was there to help you load stuff. And I know people are just like, oh, the pork tees are so fancy. They need roadies. No, the pork tees drag <laughs> a lot of stuff with them to shows. Uh, trailers. You saw our trailer door. Yeah. Uh, front to back top to bottom the whole thing was full Uh, yeah so you guys definitely have plenty of gear to bring with you so let's talk about the importance of maybe outsourcing some of that stuff to somebody else in the community so maybe you don't have to worry about dragging lights with you and setting them up and making sure they're working and you can just focus on playing drums or whatever yeah it's a it's a mindset thing man i mean when when you're when you're as busy as we are and you're getting as old as we are and you're you've got all the extracurricular family stuff and stuff going on in your life. You don't want to also set up your gear and tear down your gear and make yourself more exhausted. And so like, as more money started coming in, we knew that we needed to hire people because there's nothing, there's nothing worse than mixing your own band from stage. Like you're the sound guy, but you're also in the band. That's (laughs) that it it should never happen. You should never, ever do that. I mean, I, I, and I don't mean it because we've all done it. We've done it. And, guilty. and so if, if dude, dude, if that involves finding somebody that you trust that has a good ear and paying them 50 bucks to just be there to just run the faders, like you got to do it. Mm-hmm. And if you're, if you're injured and you've got it, you've got an early morning the next morning and you need help loading stuff, like you got to hire somebody and you need to, we can make more money on merch if someone's always there instead of while we're playing. So we got to hire somebody and it just, you know, it, it just makes my mentality easier to just be up on stage and play the show. That's why all famous bands don't they don't do anything because they're they need to focus on the show and, and have a good time. And so we hi- we hired roadies. We've had at least we have a we always bring three people with us, just techs that come to the show. They've been doing it for the last four years where they arrive, they take our stuff out, they set it up. They monitor the stage while we play. They take it down. They put it in there. And I know that sounds like prima donna, but that's the that's the moment in my. I've played in front of twenty thousand people at Rag Riot. We've sold out the Paramount Theater. We sold out McGrath Amphitheater. You know, the time that I felt like a rock star the most was when I had a, when I had someone setting them up and tearing down my drums. As I mean, that's <laughs> that is like the most valuable thing in in the world is to know that I just don't have to like break. I break my my butt during the show. And then now I have to do it afterwards when all we're trying to do is just talk to fans and some merch. And then there's nothing worse than spending an hour talking to fans and then turning around and your stuff's still on stage and you still have to go through that. So oh, yeah. I know it's definitely pre- we've been called prima donnas for five, six, seven, eight years now. And if that's if if making enough money to employ g- good people in this community and, and have them make sure our ship runs, then if that's prima donnas, then cool. That's what we are, man. Yeah, it's it's. To me, it's no different than, like, why would you get mad at a local business for employing people? It's like, screw this restaurant. I mean, their food's great and stuff, and the presentation's awesome, but they hire people, so they suck. It's like, no, you wouldn't do that. You, know? <laughs> you wouldn't do that, man. <laughs> it's so funny. But, yeah, I mean, you're bringing up a really good point that a lot of people probably don't understand, and it's probably not talked about enough in music podcasts, is the fact that if you are playing a show, let's let's just say it's Eagle Grove, uh two plus hour drive almost th- let's just say it's three three hour drive one way let's say it's three hour setup time maybe two you know and then let's say you play for four hours and then you have a, a two hour tear down time and then you gotta drive back three hours we're talking 20 hour day here you know i if i was in your shoes i would literally be doing anything i could to 
augment the or like reduce the amount of work that I have to do. You know, let's just let's just fa- I don't want to. I, I could deal with the driving, yes. But if it came down to like by the time you started, you'd be all sweaty and be like, I don't even want to play drums now. You know, yeah. If we go back, if we ever go back down to if 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 we lose popularity and our our rate gets lower and lower and lower, the last thing that will go is our roadies, <laughs> and then at that point we will cease to be a band because I'll take zero dollars at at that point as long as I don't have to do it. I, I just the and plus like we've got these great people. We've got three with some rotating casts of of awesome awesome people that we love and trust that have been with us for years that we are putting money into their pockets for their efforts. We've got a great sound company. Plus we work with other sound engineers if he can't be there and lighting guys and wall led walls. And it's just like, I, I, I feel like we're employing people and, and putting money and, and spreading money around. And I, I don't know. It just, feel, it's always felt good. It's just feels like a, an organization instead of a band, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's, it's so beautiful. I mean, that, that literally is going right back to the community thing that you said earlier. Like, in your community, it's like that person can bake, so they're the baker. That person can cut meat, so they're they're the butcher. This person's the candlestick maker. Blah blah down the line, you know. Like, it's no different than a band. You need somebody. You don't need to have a roadie, but like, if you're gonna be playing those four hour shows that are three plus hours away on a consistent basis, it might not hurt to have a roadie, you know. And it's, you know, sure the roadie's not the rock star at the show, but to you they are. Oh yeah, they're more important. <laughs> I mean, it's, I love my, I love my techs, man. They're, they're just beautiful humans. And they, dude, I've got a, um, I haven't social mediated or anything, but it's slowly seeping the rounds, but I've got a, my first child is on the way here in the next month. And like, so my life is like, I got a baby girl coming and man, my life, my life is busy. And now I've got a very important thing happening in my life. It's like anything I can do to remove things from my plate that I can remove stresses. Like I, I got to do it. So that's fine. I might hire two drum techs for each show at this point. I don't even know. <laughs> might just hire a replacement drummer at this point. No, I'm, just I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Well, I might have, I've got a guy, I've got a guy on retainer right now that just in case if, if this baby comes during a show, he's going to be filling in for me. Cause we can't, we're, we can't cancel shows, you know, like we have to play these shows. So I've got a guy ready to roll just for a few dates, just in case it happens. But we'll see, man. Who's going to do the rapping for those? I'm thinking about I'm thinking about I'm thinking about recording it and putting it on the tracks in Ableton so that it just comes through. That's <laughs> I, think, awesome. I think it makes sense. <laughs> Who cares? Awesome. For those that don't know, Mike Schulte is uh, the rappingest drummer ever in Iowa, possibly the world. Uh, you can be the judge on whether or not, a, you know, you think there's other rapping drummers out there. Uh, you know, and that's another thing I think is really funny about you guys is you take everything very, very seriously, but at the same time you don't, you know? <laughs> so like that is, that is literally the perfect mix of everything to, to be business oriented and have a, you know, a f- forward focused mindset, but still go out there and just have a good time. Um, let me just speak from my own personal experience. When I, when we opened up for you, I was like, I mean, I know you and I've, I've interacted minusculely with the other members of the band, but I was thinking to myself, are these guys going to be like, we're up here, we're backstage. We're not going to talk. You know, like I I had to think to myself, like they're very business oriented. They could want to just sit by themselves and not talk. That's not the case. You guys are everyone that you brought with was more than, you know, nice to, to myself and Jesse and, you know, it's just kind of mind blowing to know that there's people out there like that, like like you and your band that I said can be so business oriented, but still just so fun loving and wanting to have a good time. Dude, we sat right behind you. We brought our lawn chairs and we sat behind Mason's guitar stack while you guys played your whole set and just drank some beers and just listened to the show. It was, it was fun, man. But but I've learned from experience. So like we did, we very rarely opened for anyone over the last five years, but we opened for Hairball. Because their their management team used to work with us quite a bit, and they'll they'll throw us some shows here and there. They they like us, but they've been trying to get us to open for them for a long time. But we're like, ah, it just just doesn't work. You know the the money's the money's not where it usually is, and we're bringing this whole crew of people, and we like to play full shows, and that's not really our crowd. But we said, Let, fine, let's do it, and we did it in Des Moines, and it was so sick, man. It was a whole different experience of of like I said, just the anticipation of like, okay, here we go, we're we're gonna go get them, and we're gonna play. 45 minutes, then we're off the stage. We're going to play our best material. But it was so cool to – those guys were like 
came out and to the side and like watched our show. And then after the show, I Mason and I had like a, a 45 minute long conversation with happy, uh, just backstage, just like he was heading to the tour bus and we just talked about, you know, how crazy COVID was. And, and now that they're getting back out and look, he didn't have to do that. Like we didn't fully expect him. Same thing. We opened up for Dustin Lynch at the Vikings, Minnesota Vikings home opener outside of us bank stadium. And, you know, of course, like Dustin Lynch didn't talk to us, but, uh, but his entire crew and their drummer and their bass player, like we hung out before and after the show and they were, I mean, like you don't expect you, you're not expecting anything, but the fact that they made that, uh, they made that happen and they just said, Hey, great to see you guys. That was awesome. That was super cool. You know, th- those little things go a long way. And so I, it's nice to recharge ourselves with that and then continue to act that way as we always have, you know, to the other bands, because you get, you just flip the script a little bit. You go, Oh yeah, it, it, this is kind of cool. You know, this is kind of a cool thing. Yeah. I mean, it's, it'd be so cool to have a band and this is just me just like whimsically thinking out loud, but like, it'd be so cool to have a band that was, that was good enough that could warrant having an opener and have openers that would want to open for you. You know, like that's another thing to think about is the fact that, you know, I mean, obviously, yes, you get the views, the people come, you're, you're booking the big festivals that people would want to play anyways, but you're inviting people with and they're saying yes, but like it comes back down to if you, if you were just a band full of non-personable people, people might just be like, meh, I don't know. You know? I don't want to do that. Yeah. Yeah. So I th- no, and there's situations where, where you're opening for a band and it's not hospitable and they're like, you can't move, you can't touch my stuff. And you, you, if you're not, we're going to pull the plug. If you're not done by this time, then that's not a good situation. You don't want to be there. Even if it is a really good payday and there's going to be like 10,000 people there, you don't want, you don't want that aggravation. So yeah, you know, it's, it's a mutual thing here. We're all, it's, it's a community. We are all together on this. Like it's just got to remain that way. Yeah. Uh, it's so nice. It's so nice to see that, you know, even though there was like a little bit of backlash just from you literally giving people advice on the Internet uh, <laughs> that you haven't soured off at all. So it's it's super good to see that you're still, you know, the good, fun, loving person that you you started out being. And it's also nice to know that, like, even though you have a podcast that is literally like one of the best podcasts that's out there, you know, given in its category, it, it was number one for a while, you know, in three countries. So like it's nice to know that like you guys are still, you know, you're still local. It's not like you were just like, well, we're we're all moving to L.A. now. You know, it's not like you were just like we're picking up and we're <laughs> we're changing everything. I'm cool now and nobody else is, so we're out of here. You know, you, you're still you're keeping everything as local as possible, and I absolutely love that about you guys. Well, and it's weird, man. I told you I, the reason we started that podcast was to have something a, more, a little more global. But what's weird is like I don't think that many local people actually listen to us. <laughs> so it's like everyone that listens to us is from elsewhere. Mm-hmm. And so in Iowa, people are like, I have, I've never heard of that podcast. But elsewhere, it's like, oh, my God. the confu-. We're talking about doing a live show, man. I don't know if you've ever thought about it, but we think in September we are going to do a live podcast taping where we're going to sell tickets and have people come. And there's there's people that like our Patreon members that are going to fly. They're going to buy plane tickets to fly here from California and they're going to stay a couple nights so that they can come watch us talk on a microphone. It's just, <laughs> it's mind blowing to me, man. But I, I like, I'm, I'm just going to keep going with it and hopefully people like listen to it. And I even dropped a bomb. I, I, like I said, I hadn't put the baby girl thing on social media. So I even in the last episode, I think it was the space balls episode. I said, I like said it in my intro. I was like, well, you know, we got a lot of things going on. I got a girl coming. And I was like a test to see how many of my maybe close circle friends listen to it. And I got like two messages going, wait, what? That was it. So it's like <laughs> not even like my close, my immediate circle of friends listen, but the whole freaking world does. So and whatever. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'll have to say in my defense, I'm not a Spaceballs fan. I, 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 oh, there you go, man. I, I, I like me some Star Wars, but it wasn't until like five years ago i started watching star wars that's how far behind the curve i am with movies so but i did see you teased uh possibly doing a review of basketball so it it came out today man we did basketball we had a fun time with that one i'm listening to that Uh, one on the road today today. (laughs) yeah dude uh top top gun uh we just recorded the top gun the 1986 one in honor of the new maverick top gun that's coming out i didn't even know there Uh, was so and what we like to (laughs) Oh, dude, it's been in the works forever. And here's what's crazy. There is there's Oscar buzz about Tom Cruise performance in this new movie. And they're talking. Some people are saying it's like the best film of the last five years. And and so, like, that's weird for us to think because the old Top Gun's just cheesy and like, oh, whatever. But 
I don't know. We're going to go see. We have a private screening the night it comes out. We reserved a theater in Cedar Rapids and we're going to go see it. And then we're going to do a review, a review episode on it. But I don't I don't know. Top Gun Maverick might be might be like a really good movie and we just don't know it yet. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. And I mean, I I wished I watched more movies. And like I said, I'll, I'll go through. I love watching your clips is what like really sucks me in <laughs> uh, the one with the dude with the big jaw. You're gonna have to help me out. He's got the villain jaw. Oh, the the world's greatest jawline. It was um, it was from Red Dawn, the movie yeah. Red Dawn. Yeah. I can't remember his real name, but he played he played Mickey in Pee Wee's uh, Big Adventure. Yeah, <laughs> totally got off me off guard. I don't know how you guys like. I don't know if you're looking this stuff up or if you like. Oh, I've seen this guy somewhere. He's here, but I have zero facial <clears throat> recognition skills. If I see somebody in a movie and it's like, oh, I. I yeah, I guess that's the same person. Or if like a famous person walked by me down the street, I would not notice. However, the weird thing is if they said something, I would notice the voice. As weird as right, that sounds. Right, right. So. You're more audio associated. But no, I, I've always had that weird memory system of from classic movies is I remember all the quotes. I know the inflections of their voice because I saw them so many times. I just loved watching it. So I'm the guy that will go, oh, that actor was in that movie. And like uh, that's how that's just how my brain works. In fact, uh, Spaceballs, um, though, there's a guard in Spaceballs that is is needle nose Ned from Groundhog Day, Ned Ryerson. Like, and you know, I just I just always see those like, and I like to point that out because it. You know, we're making this for people that are like us, so I, I feel like people like to hear those. Oh, I never knew that that guy was in that. Oh man, you know. Well, yeah, I mean, that's what's extra fun for me when I like watch those clips. Is I. It blows me away. It's like I, I never in a million years would have known this. So it's it's kind of cool that somebody else is out there with their finger on the pulse telling me what's up, you know, and it's I'm just telling you what's up. I'm just telling you what's up, man. Oh, gosh. And I, I, I tell you what, I'm today when when I'm done here, I have to edit this. But as soon as I'm done, I'm, I'm pulling up that basketball episode. <laughs> I cannot wait to watch that. That movie is so funny. I hope I mean, we were talking comedians earlier and Burt Kreischer and and in that circle is uh, Joey Diaz, who makes an appearance in the movie. He's, he's in the movie. Yep. And I'm I'm excited to see if you end up mentioning that or not. Uh, do you know the story behind him being in that movie? No, no. What happened? He showed up to do a, a, like a tryout, like an acting tryout somewhere else. And he walked in there and they were pretty much just like looked at him and like, you don't got the part, dude. He was like, well, shit. And he (laughs) and he walked out and someone else was just like, hey, you're supposed to be in this building. And he was like, "Okay." And he walked in there and it was a tryout for basketball that he didn't even submit like an application for. And they were like, you're supposed to be in here, buddy. And so he like went in and tried out and they gave him the part (laughs) that he wasn't even supposed to have in the first place. So, yeah, I can't even remember. He comes in and says something super foul. It's extra hilarious. But yeah. um, Yeah. Yeah, He's like uh yeah, he goes. We pulled that clip for our TikTok. I'll do it this week. But he says something like, uh, "They're like, what's what's the matter with Coop?" It's like, I don't know. He's zero for four, and he and he smells like Charlie Sheen or something like that. <laughs> smells like yeah. He, he names some like alcoholic '80s actor or something like yeah. that. <laughs> Christian Slater. That's what it was. Christian oh my Slater. god, <laughs> that's hilarious. So I, I. I implore everyone to check it out i'll talk about it more in the intro but mike is there anything else that we haven't covered because we have we have covered an hour and uh i know you you don't have a hard out time but you kind of got stuff to do so Anyf- no man it's just great it's just fun to i i i want to tell you that it's awesome that you do this podcast and i think it's awesome that you continue to interview and and pay tribute to a, a lot of the great musicians around here, and I think it's huge. And I know that you probably get some hate, just like I used to. So stick with it, man. <laughs> Keep going, and 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 for the rest of it, man. Yeah, everybody, check. Uh, Pork Tornadoes are likely going to be in your area this summer. Uh, Porktornadoes.com. We got all our dates. We're on Facebook. We're on TikTok. Uh, Confusebreakfast.com. That'll link you to like all of our podcast platforms it'll it'll um send you to our tiktok all that stuff so yeah t- check it out it's fun it's it's a good way to, especially we're all going to be driving so much this summer to gigs like it's a cool way to to i i don't listen to music at all after a show i can't i just want to listen to spoken word do not play a single note of music i'm done listening to music like spoken word that's it so podcasts are great for that and we got a 
we're not a like a timely podcast, right? You know, like it's not a cultural uh, affairs or like current events thing. So you can you can just scroll where at like eighty episodes you can go, oh that movie, boom, and hit it, and it's gonna be fun. That's that's probably my favorite part about it. Me being a casual listener of it, and I've admitted it, and I, I probably shouldn't have. I should have been like, I listen every week, and it's amazing. But you, know, <laughs> you you would know. But at the same time, yeah, for the casual listener, it is absolutely amazing. You pull up through there. Oh, I like this one. I'm gonna. Li- I like this movie. I'm gonna listen to this. And you guys just have a blast talking about it. And like I said, you talk about stuff that most people wouldn't even realize that's that's happening in the movies. So, dude, dude, you're crushing it out there. You're working so hard. Your work ethic is something that I admire. And uh, you know, it's just the whole fact that you're out there doing it. That's you, you know, you're doing the thing, and that's that's what it takes is just going out there and doing the thing. You're not talking about it. You're we doing only it. got. <laughs> We only got one shot, man. Like, I don't know what people are waiting for. Like, we got one life. We don't know how long it's going to last. Like, you might as well just go because nobody else is going to help. No one else is going to do it for you. So just go do it and see what happens. Yeah, man. Well, stick tight. I'm going to end the podcast. But, uh, dude, thank you very much for joining me. I really, really appreciate it. Yeah, thanks for having me, buddy. Absolutely. Oh, this episode was awesome. I, like, started out instantly with a laugh. I mean, instantaneous He's already goofing around. I love this guy, Mike Schulte. He's tons of fun. Go check out his old podcast if you're into if you're into the Audible Farm podcast. You would love it. But if you guys like movies, and I know pretty much everyone watches movies, even me, a self-proclaimed non-movie guy, can still find movies that I really really enjoy. And Mike's podcast, The Confused Breakfast, they talk about movies. I mean, it's if if this was your first introduction to that being in existence i heavily heavily suggest you check it out especially if you like movies uh i find i found episodes on the that i really really enjoyed and like i said i'm not much of a movie guy and i know for a fact as of the day we recorded this i'm going to uh hop in my car and drive somewhere and when i'm doing that i am going to listen to the episode that they did recently with basketball it's gonna be so good i know it is uh (laughs) the, the guy finds success everywhere and it's it's because he works hard and uh, pays attention to detail, but also because he's fun-loving and has a great time doing all these things. It's 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 about attitude and it's about performance, and that's what it is. And he's he's talked about that uh, in ad nauseum almost when when he comes on here. It's one of my favorite things to talk about because he is one of the people in the music scene that is working the hardest, as you know, as from what I can tell. And what, what might not seem like a lot of work to other people, it's just like, ah, well, somebody just books them and they got roadies and derp a derp I get it. I, I really get it. But at the same time, if I was in his shoes, I'd be doing the same exact thing. So hats off to Mike for, for just going out there and crushing it, doing all the hard work. If you guys are looking for what he's doing now, like I said, you can go to the... Down below, there's links to everything. There's Pork Tornadoes links down there. There's Confused Breakfast links down there. I don't have a link down there to the... Um, iowa music podcast which is last i checked was still on streaming services if you guys are listening to this i I guarantee it's wherever you're listening to this you could probably find a copy of it so check that out too if you're interested in the audible farm podcast and you want to check out some more music related stuff some hot button issues some hot takes from some great people uh and i i can't say it enough confused breakfast he doesn't need any more listeners on that but i will tell you what listen to it absolutely go listen to it it is so much fun to listen to those guys the clips the clips they post are amazing too they the clips they post will absolutely suck you in and be like i have to watch this episode uh so i dare you i dare you to go watch some of their clips and then not listen to an episode it's so good it's so good otherwise pork tornadoes tons of shows coming up this year i will not be opening up for the pork tornadoes at any shows this year it's a sad deal but guess what that leaves room for other people go watch your favorite band if they're opening up for the pork tornadoes you have no excuse this year it is an absolute must to go see these guys and pretty much no matter where you're playing in iowa you're going to be within a 30 40 50 mile drive of the pork tornadoes sometime this summer into the fall so definitely definitely check it out mike schulte is uh like i said one of my favorite people and uh he makes good stuff. It doesn't matter what kind of content he's making. It seems like he's making good stuff. So hats off to him. Doing all the hard work. Check out the links down below. Pork Teas, Confused Breakfast. Down below those links, there's links to Audible Farm goodness. You can check out the Audible Farm shop for merch. There's uh, t-shirts and all sorts of other goodies there. It was like 90 out today, so I don't think I'll be ordering hoodies. Hats are probably going to be the next thing I order, and I've been slacking on it pretty much just because, well, I don't have a whole lot of free time to sit down and 
and carve out some orders for that kind of stuff. So I apologize that uh, I missed a week recently. I apologize that there's not much more new merch. But we got those old school Audible Farm shirts in there still. Those things are nice and breathable. Perfect for summertime. I know you know someone that has one. Ask them about it. They'll tell you. That's pretty much why I got those shirts. I hunted and hunted and hunted through all my concert shirts and other people's shirts to be like, that's the one I want. And I, I found it and somebody made them for me. So hats off. Uh, you guys are checking out Audible Farm merch. A lot of people have bought it over the last few months. Thank you guys very much. I really appreciate it. It makes me smile so much seeing Audible Farm shirts out there, especially the ones that are all worn out. I know those people have been fans for a long time. Those people have been wearing those shirts, representing a lot. So hats off to all you guys. Otherwise, if you guys want to watch video versions of the podcast, check it out on the Patreon channel www.patreon.com slash audible farm there's a link down below for that one dollar a month you can watch all the video versions of the podcast i've had some people say why don't you just let them go for free and uh before i ever did video it, it took me no time at all to edit a podcast now that there's video involved it's like tripled the t amount of time and then you gotta wait for things to upload and whatever so i guess just based on the inconvenience i don't think a uh, dollar a month is too much to ask otherwise if you guys just like listening to these i know there's a lot 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 of people that just love listening to these it's free it's free to listen to anywhere uh the video versions are what costs you otherwise you can check out video clips on the youtube channel audible farm youtube channel that is available online as well check out all the audible farm goodness there in the link section down below i don't have too much more to go off of this week um, yeah, just go out and check out the Pork Tornadoes this summer. Uh, check out that Confused Breakfast podcast. If you guys like listening to podcasts, you like laughing, if you uh, are tired of listening to music on the road and you want to try something else out, I would suggest that. All right. There it is. I'm out for the week. We'll check you guys next week. Peace.